again, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen, sitting in tonight for Alex Jones. It is Friday, February 24th, 2012, and here's a quick look at what we have lined up for you this evening. In my opinion, it's the most clear evidence of a false flag event by the U.S. government. Delta Flight 253. The U.S. government allowed a known potential terrorist to board the plane without a passport. Tonight, the final segment of our four-part series of an exclusive InfoWars interview with Flight 253 passenger Kurt Haskell, who maintains that the underwear bomber was carrying a fake bomb and was the unwitting dupe in a case of government entrapment. Then, is global warming being exploited by governments as an excuse to play God? Rosalind Peterson of the Agriculture Defense Coalition joins us to talk about the UN's plan to regulate worldwide geoengineering of the planet. All that and more coming up during the next 30 minutes or so. But first, let's get right on to our top headlines. CIA NATO front group drafts humanitarian aid for Syria an effort to impose the same sort of humanitarian aid on Syria that ultimately killed around 30,000 people in Libya is now underway in Tunisia. CNN reports that world powers, more like corrupt states belonging to the Arab League and members of the European Union, are mapping out a plan to deliver, to deliver humanitarian aid in Syria under the banner of Friends of Syria. Say hello to my little friend. In January, it was reported that MI6, the CIA, and British intelligence are in Syria working with the Free Syrian Army and the Syrian National Council to overthrow the al-Assad regime. The Free Syrian Army is widely recognized as a creation of NATO. It is comprised largely of militants from the Muslim Brotherhood itself, an asset of British intelligence. So perhaps... President Obama is, you know, shooting for another Nobel Peace Prize as the CIA launches yet another covert operation and bombs yet another country. Evidence grows that 9-11 first responders got cancer at ground zero. The director of Mount Sinai Medical Center's World Trade Center Health Program is preparing to publish a study that will show elevated risk of cancer among 9-11 rescue workers. And this is very sad because these are the same heroes that were barred from attending the 10th anniversary ceremony of the 9-11 attacks. And those who enrolled in health care programs got screened through terrorism databases. Once again, literally adding insult to injury. Moving right along. And now concerns over martial law in America as the Patriot Movement is now on the FBI's radar. A recent report by the LA Times characterizes the sovereign citizen movement as a major threat, and they say it's on par with Islamic extremism. And it uh, actually states that more than 100,000 Americans are domestic terrorists as a result of their affiliation with the group. This is something that InfoWars, you know, the InfoWars team, Alex Jones, has warned you about for many years. If you are, let's say, a Tea Partier, a constitutionalist, uh, you value your Second Amendment then according to the government, you are a bigger threat than Al-Qaeda, and you're going to be a problem. They're going to keep their eyes on you. So the article entitled Sovereign Citizen Movement Now on FBI's Radar frames the belief that the U.S. is essentially under martial law. Well, they got that right. Along with support for introducing the gold standard, evil, as political views are becoming indicative of violent extremism. As we've documented on numerous occasions, the federal government routinely characterizes normal behavior as extremist activity or a potential indicator of a terrorist intent. So chances are you are a terrorist. Okay, let's take a look at our next story. Uh, this, is, this is really bad. Farmer faces possible three-year prison sentence for feeding community. Wisconsin dairy farmer Vernon Hershberger is being charged with four criminal misdemeanors that could land him in prison for three years in fines of over $10,000. His crime? Supplying a private club with fresh milk and other farm products. 
Now, the FDA is actively conducting sting operations and raids against peaceful farmers, which have resulted in the farms shutting down and people not having access to their food. Meanwhile, of course, the mega corporations like Monsanto, well, they continue to push the genetically modified frankenfoods to the masses. Yet another example of tyrannical behavior by the corrupt and evil FDA. And now it's time for a brand new Man on the Street. And this is a segment that our writer, producer, and now reporter, John Bount, uh, put together as he takes to the streets of Austin, Texas, to investigate denial. And here's what he has to say. I'm in Austin, Texas, on the UT campus. I've been asking students all day about the recently passed NDAA legislation. I was surprised to learn where the real denial is coming from. Just one look at mainstream news will make any rational thinker conclude that Americans are in a hyper state of denial. Public opinion is in a stranglehold when it comes to real, open, honest debate. Whether it's the looming war in Iran based on fear-mongering and little fact, or the blind eye given to Ron Paul's agenda to get the country back to its constitutional values. A new Suffolk University poll shows him with a commanding lead in New Hampshire at almost 30 points above his rivals. At the same time, Newt Gingrich and John Huntsman have faltered. Rick Santorum, who polls in single digits here, is looking to give Romney a run in the Granite State after his near victory in Iowa. Are people aware that they could be kidnapped, detained without trial, and sent away to a torture facility for an untimely death? simply based on the description of domestic terrorism? Denial comes in three forms, according to Sigmund Freud. Simple denial. Deny the reality of the unpleasant fact altogether. Do you feel like you get all the information you need from mainstream media? No, I don't. I hardly watch the news anyway. And I'm in a lying and deception class right now, and we talked about media and, like, news and how most of it is just... They take, like, the smallest thing possible. It's not a big deal. and blow it out of proportion so you at least feel like something important's going on when in fact like there are other things that could be covered that I mean they don't want to cover or they don't. Minimization. Admit the fact but deny its seriousness. Just wanted to ask you if you've heard about the NDAA legislation, the bill that allows the president to detain American citizens, whisk them away off to a torture facility and never be seen again, that that's been legalized as of this year? Are you aware of this? Um, I actually have heard of that. That's like how they weren't going to close Guantanamo. That was like the legislation that like decided that, I believe. If you're labeled a domestic terrorist, which could include the fact that you're, you're missing fingers, that you bought beer at a store with cash, that uh, you bought baby formula, do you take that seriously or would you feel like, yes, that may be happening, but it's probably for a good reason? Um, because I don't know the details, like I want to say that it could possibly be for a good, a good reason. Projection. Admit both the fact and the seriousness, but deny responsibility. Once the war against Saddam begins, we expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up. Would you be more prone to say, yeah, that's happening, but there's nothing you can do about it? Um, I, I don't think that there's nothing that can be done. I think if enough people are informed about it, then the more people that are informed, the more people can, you know, have an input and say, and one voice, you know, adds to that change. So, I mean, what's, what's the entire point of this bill? Domestic terrorism, they want to they wanna quiet their critics. We're, we represent the alternative media. Mainstream media didn't even cover NDAA. I, mean, I have an idea that, you know, the media is like, you know, sponsored by certain you know, uh, political parties and also certain people with power within this country and they don't allow certain information to be, you know, transmitted to the masses out of, you know, it just wouldn't be right for the, for the normal person's psyche. American citizens are distracted by a number of worthless time-consuming outlets. We are all addicted to our own self-importance. The only way to begin to treat addiction, whether it is alcohol or drugs, for example, is to break the cycle of denial. The mainstream media delivers a skewed reality, manipulating the American landscape with their theater of denial. Isn't it amazing that we are denying our own slavery to a system fueled by that very denial? 
John Baum, InfoWars Nightly News. Wow, and that was a great piece put together by John Baum. who we'll also put together our quote of the day for us today. It's from Marcus Cicero. Though silence is not necessarily an admission, it is not a denial either. Once again, that was from Roman philosopher, consul, and Roman constitutionalist Marcus Cicero.